it, it for me it felt like it felt like gut punch after gut punch it felt it felt lonely you know um and like ac across the board man it felt you know and, and this in no way is like blaming you know my ex or anything like that bro this it's just it's just the emotions that came up for me man during that season leading up to it because in this season like i was bro i was i was wrecked i was wrecked man like just emotionally within myself like wayne you were supposed to be that dude you know what i mean and so like you got pride you know i got you got you got your family members you know you got you got the church at the time i was pastoring like you know what i mean and and when i was going through you know post my divorce bro i didn't just i didn't just lose you know like the marriage you know in the in the space of divorce if you i didn't lose i didn't just lose the marriage but also lost my job bro like most people bro like when you go through a divorce it's like you know you just you lose your relationship and and don't get me wrong like definitely not making light of that of course. you know it's one thing to lose your relationship but it's a double thing bro like you lose your relationship and you broke what's up brave hearts community this is sean heineman your premier pre-engagement coach back with another segment of it's scary to be Mary wanting you to love fearlessly this is another part of our life after divorce series. It's been doing really well. People have been sharing it. People has been inboxing me. People are going through divorces and they like, I need that series. So we're going to continue in this because the testimonies has been a blessing to so many people. Today's guest, this is a special one because he been knowing me way back when before Scary to Remarry, he knew me the first time around. He was there for me when I went through my divorce. He, I mean, I have done life with this man. Today's guest is a believer. He's a husband. He's a father. He's a friend of mine, someone I admire. He's a pastor, an entrepreneur, and a coach. Bravehearts community, let's show some love to Dwayne Hawkins. How are you doing this evening, sir? Very well, bro. Very well, man. It's, uh, it's just super good to be on here with you, man. Legit, legit. Uh, grinning ear to ear, man, because I always love your heart and uh, just love your spirit, bro. Real talk, real talk. That's what's up, man. I'm so glad that we are able to do this. I want to respect your time. And this series is it's a transparent one. Um, it's it's something that's going to be able to help someone. It's going to be life changing. Um, so we want to uh, talk about just take a back a, a trip down memory lane, if you will. Um, yeah. And let's and let's let's jump into this. So, in, in your last marriage, how did you and and, and your ex meet? Uh yeah. And the previous man, uh, legit met uh on a college campus, uh, actually NAU, to be exact. And uh, real talk, man, I was. Uh, kind of uh, just new to the Flagstaff area, inner city kid from Oakland, California. Um, and, you know, the story is still the same, man. I just, I was looking for friends. That's legit all I was doing, man. I was looking for friends. And so I seen her coming out of the computer lab. And as I was going in for, for tutoring and I was like, hey, my name's Dwayne. I'm new to the campus just looking to make some connections and, and, and make some friends and plain smooth, bro. Her response was uh, pretty much like, good to meet you, but I already got enough friends and walked on, bro. So like that was the, that was the introduction. Wow. Yep. Yep. Wow. So, well, and then eventually, you know, you, you get to, to know her, you get to, to talk in, uh, and, and things of that nature. At that time in your life, what made you say this was the the woman for me at that time in your life? Yeah, I think I think for me, man, in that season of my life, I had um, I had admired. I mean, from the first time we met, let me see, that's like August 90, 98. Um, 
you know, and then there's like, there's a, it's three years from that introduction to like the wedding date, if you will. So it's like three and a half years, um, time frame of like just seeing each other around campus. And then, you know, then obviously there's friendship and then, you know, so on and so forth. But I think really, man, what sparked me in that season of my life was that. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. I just grew up seeing my mom and my dad, um, which, man, God bless them. Shout out to Pastor Timothy and Rachel Hawkins in Oakland, California, man. They are they're still doing it, bro. They're still doing it. What am I? They are, I want to say 39, 40 years, bro. And, uh, in marriage, man. So like, I just, I grew up watching them, you know, I seen practically almost all of their fights. You know, I seen them when they were in, in arguments and I seen those arguments go like full circle, you know what I mean? And so for me, just seeing those arguments, go full circle to reconciliation, to, to friendship, um, you know, and then just seeing how they loved on myself and my brothers, bro. Like, I was just like, I think that's, that's, that's what I want. That's what I aspire for, man. And so that was my, that was my heart then. And then corny mode, corny mode, if I could, I could say this, uh, what tipped the scales for me um, by this time I had, I dropped out of college. I had, you know, I was kind of in and out of jobs. Um, and I was really trying to figure out like, Dwayne, what are we doing? I kind of recommitted my life back to the Lord in that season. Um, cause I had walked away for about a year and, uh, no lie, corny moment here. I, with a homeboy of mine, we went and saw, uh, the best man, <laughs> I swear movies are dangerous, bro. Movies are dangerous, bro. They, you know, especially when you're like 20, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And I already had like the lifelong example of of my parents. And so it was like, you know, best man just kind of tipped the scales. And and that's where I was like, man, I need to, I need to try to figure this out because I this is what I really want. So mm. um that's kind of that's kind of like how literally that's that's how I how I ended up you know, in, uh, entering into my first marriage, man. That was, that was the trajectory of it. Uh, the best man, huh? Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Doggone best man. <laughs> well, well, since we're here, I, I guess for me, my, my, my corny moment was, uh, I think I was 14 years old. I guess I'm telling my age, my brother took me to see Boomerang at the movie theater. Okay. Yep. Yep. And, and um, quick side note, since I'm talking about this, uh, I remember I was talking to an old co-worker, co-worker of mine, and I told him I seen uh, Friday in, in the movie theaters. And he looked at me like I was a dinosaur. He was like. <laughs> so anyway, that's how old I am. Horrible, um, horrible, horrible. Right. Anyway, so I seen um, Boomerang in the movie theaters. And that was really the first time I seen like black people to that magnitude mm -hmm. where they were like wearing suits and, and you know and yep. i was like oh i want to be like that so i i that was my thing that kind of changed my mind frame to about right. me and the way we saw 
us, you know. So. Totally, totally, one hundred. Yeah. Yep, yep. So I get it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> At what point did you know there was trouble in paradise? That's a good question, man. Um. Honestly, bro, like, let me see. Just trying to go back a moment. Oh, one. So maybe 17, like 16, 17 years in. Um, mm. Yeah, is when. Now, you know, for me, I still had I still had my my moments of angst you know, throughout, throughout that process, man. And, and, um, I, I kind of prided myself in really like just journaling a lot, bro. I journaled, I journaled a lot, period. Yeah. Um, yeah. but throughout the course of my previous marriage, man, I, I journaled a lot literally before the Lord, like visions, dreams, mm -hmm. frustrations, all of that, man. Um, uh, and more specifically, every single thing, literally, like, kind of around my marriage then. And so, like, that, that is one of the things that, like, just kind of kept me close. Mm -hmm. um, but the trouble in paradise, man, for me, was around between maybe around 17, year 17 um, and 18. And I just, I just felt like I didn't have the fight, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I, I I never I never and I said this I said this to my mom and my dad like I never um I never thought that that I would emotionally burn out never never because like just the cloth I'm cut from bro like yeah you know I'm adopted into my dad's last name Hawkins bro like grew up under the notion of like yo we're Hawkins men we grind, we hustle, we lean in, we sacrifice, we fall down. Like we, we fall on the sword. You know what I'm saying? Like we die, bro. We give our lives. Like that's, that was me. You know what I'm saying? And I just never, I never planned for me just kind of hitting an emotional wall. So mm -hmm. uh, I would say you're 17, man. And that's kind of how that happened for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that has to be tough. Cause I, I feel the same way. I never thought I would be the one getting a divorce. Uh, I remember people just finding out and Bro. they were inboxing me like, Bro. Sean, the doctor of love, the the, Bro. the, the, the guy in ministry, the, you're teaching marriage classes. Like, come on, like, come on, can't come do on. Y'all not giving, you know, so. Man, man. I, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I think, I think, man, like the whole, like divorce is not an option. Like I was waving that banner, bro. Waving that banner, bro. Like would, would low key almost cut somebody. Like if they threw that term my way, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I get it, bro. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I remember the first night, maybe the second or third night when, when I went through my separation, I was in the shower. Will never forget. Mm. I think I shared this story before. Man, I cried like a baby, and I just had my hands lifted. I was just like, "God, what am I mm. doing? I don't yeah. know what am like." That was the first time, Dwayne, in fifteen years, I was by myself. Wow! Wow! Fifteen years. Wow. So, Sheesh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. talking about broken? Bro, yeah, I I take up the whole time, man, talking talking about my process and what that looked like for me, man. It was, and just to say the least, bro, it was it was definitely up and down. It it for me, it felt like it felt like gut punch after gut punch. It felt it felt lonely, you know, um, and like ac across the board, man. It felt you know, and and this in no way is like blaming you know my ex or anything like that bro this it's just it's just the emotions that came up for me man during that season leading up to it you know and then and then thereafter and lonely doesn't mean that like i didn't have people bro like dude my mom and dad drove out here from from california bro to to like walk with me to walk with us then like you know what i'm saying like like people were people were like, yo, 
I had I had fellow pastor friends, bro, that was, you know, trying to encourage me and 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 walk with me and 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 hold me accountable and and, and encourage me and and all of that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, shoot, man, my siblings, bro, my brother and his wife, like, like, so it wasn't like I was alone. Definitely wasn't alone. You know what I'm saying? But in the silo of my scenario. It just felt lonely. You know what I'm saying? And and I, I think that's possible, but I think we need to help people understand that just because you have a feeling about where you're at in a tough season of your life, that doesn't necessarily say anything negative about the people around you. You know what I mean? Like, like your emotion and your interpretation and your response to your situation is legitimately... Um, is legitimately just yours, bro. And and it's what you're going through and what you're wrestling through. So that's like, I get it. I, I 100%, man, I get it when you talk about feeling being, being by yourself, man, first time in 15 years. Yeah, man, that's, yeah, that's a, a true story. It always humbled me even to this day. Uh, and, and I know that, you know, you remarried and stuff like that, and we'll talk about that later as well. Yeah. But looking back, what is one thing that you possibly could have, done different even just for yourself today yeah yeah differently man um it's a real good question bro differently i think i think leading you know for me i believe like you know divorce is um i believe divorce is the expression of small things and I, i'm going to use I'm use a terminology my mom like i grew up here my mom say divorce is like the the destruction of a series of small foxes along the way right like she used to always say Dwayne, it's the small foxes that destroy the vine i yes, know man. when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing because you leave a chore here or you miss an assignment here or I ask you to do something and you don't do it there, right? Like, and she would say like, just those little things would line up for me, Dwayne. And I knew, okay, my son is not, he's not in alignment. He's not in the pocket that he's supposed to be in. And so for me, that was, I believe that about divorce. And so I just, I feel like, bro, for me, Probably what I would have done differently is is round about 2015. And this is interesting. I didn't realize this, bro, until shoot, maybe about six to seven months ago. So up until 2015, bro, I I uh I always had like a, a mentor, an older gentleman, like at least two or three of them in my life. And my dad notwithstanding, like my dad's always been in my life. So but like outside of my dad, like I've always had at least two to three other gentlemen that like was just on tap. You know what I'm saying? And what's interesting is that um, up until 2015, well, from 2015 to 2019, um, I didn't have I didn't I didn't have a mentor like I didn't I didn't reach out, um, but they also didn't reach out to me either. Like it was it's this weird like four years bro of silence and so i think for me man i would have i would have i would have stayed connected i would have stayed connected i don't I, I can't tell you that 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 doesn't mean that you know things still wouldn't have gone the way that they they went but i do know this man like mentorship throughout my entire life from an older man has been crucial to my success and my health and life bro and 2015 to 2019, um, I just didn't have that, man. And it wasn't like that was that was a smooth season. It really wasn't a smooth season, man. Like 2015, you have, uh, you know, I, I I knew how to uh, grow a church by subtraction. You know, yeah. you were you were kind of a, a part of that. That you know, you had came through, you know, to the church then. That was the one out in Phoenix. That was a merge. Um, that church grew by subtraction. You know, we shut that one down, move out to the West Valley, did a replant, you know, and there's just a lot going on there. I'm, part of me was in a doctorate, running my own coaching counseling practice, trying to plan a ministry. Like there was just, I was just giving a lot, man, a lot emotionally. And, and like, by the way, right, like I was still married, three kids, right? So like, 
I just think, man, in a time that was as that felt as splintered as it did then, um, I would have I would have kept a mentor. I would have mm -hmm. kept a mentor, bro. Like, like, yo, had him on the phone every week. Like, yo, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm trying to work through. What are we doing? Yeah, I think that's one thing I would have did differently. You know, because I again, those are those small foxes that if they go unattended, bro. Yes. Before you know it, man, you're you're you go go Samson for a moment. Your whole forest, your whole crop is burnt up, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, that's that's one thing, man. Definitely one thing I would I would do differently. Mm -hmm. So how how did you heal from your divorce? Because I know this is what a lot of people want to know, especially if they are possibly going through a divorce. So what was your process like? Yeah, man. Um, so, so first off, man, I think uh, if, if for me it was there's was, there's this essence of of hope, um, and that was one thing like that I held on to throughout. I mean, shoot, at this point, almost five years now, you know, since then, and and I bring up hope. It could sound cliche, man, but the truth of the matter is, bro, like if you don't really have your hope rooted, um, and in my own case, rooted in the Lord, but there's so many lies, so many accusations, so many things that came up for me, like, bro, like going back to my childhood, like, man, like a lot of stuff in question, you know, like, I mean, bro, some stuff even came up you know, mostly, most of the folks that know me know that Timothy Hawkins, that's, I have his last name, but he's not my biological dad, but he's a dad that like literally I've only ever known. I didn't meet my bio dad until I was 27. And, you know, even today, like the relationship is, it is what it is, right? Like right. he knows he's not my dad and all of that stuff, but like my, my bio dad stuff came up around that. And so like, I had to war against all of that, bro. Um, and so for me, my hope being in the Lord, bro, I kid you not, Sean, this is this is what I prayed, bro, for like literally the first two years um, after my divorce. I said, God, I'm not asking you for anything. Um, I don't need anything from you, Lord. I'm not I'm not asking you to turn anything around. I'm not asking you to like bless my life and make me better than before. I said, Lord, I just want to be the little boy who sits on the couch with his daddy. That's all. That's that was my prayer, bro. That was my prayer. I just like, Lord, just let me be with you. Cause in this season, like I was, bro, I was, I was wrecked. I was wrecked, man. Like just emotionally within myself, like Wayne, you was supposed to be that dude. You know what I mean? And so like, you got pride, you know, I got, you got, you got your family members, you know, you got, you got the church at the time I was pastoring, like, you know what I mean? And, and when I was going through, you know, post my divorce, bro, I didn't just, I didn't just lose, you know, like the marriage, you know, in the, in the space of divorce, if you, I didn't lose, I didn't just lose the marriage, but I also lost my job, bro. Like most people, bro, like when you go through a divorce, it's like, you know, you just, you lose your relationship and, and don't get me wrong, like definitely not making light of that. Of course. You know, it's one thing to lose your relationship, but it's a double thing, bro. Like you lose your relationship and you broke. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. It's, it's hard enough living, being broke, you know, yeah, right. while being married, but then to be broke. It, so anyway, like it was, it was kind of like double grief for me, man. Like, I got to hustle, man. I got to figure this out. But let me tell you what the saving grace was for me, bro. And I know COVID means many different things for so yeah. many people. Yeah. But, you know, COVID was the the year following the year of my divorce in 2019. Um, and COVID happened in 2020, bro. And like the shutdown and the narrowing of access that we could have to people, bro. So huge for me. So huge for me. You know why? Because the whole year 2020, bro, I had to sit with myself. Mm -hmm. Yep. So many times, right? Like going through grief, particularly in the notion of a divorce, it's easy to numb. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to get to get caught up in stuff, bro, that like 
suppresses what you're really feeling and it doesn't force you to actually sit with and own like let me let me take this season bro to own my part in the divorce and what happened and at the time right three kids like the 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 situation that I created and caused for the kids like Dwayne sit and own that bro sit and own what you've done your part in it right but then second to that sit and own the new reality you know what mm -hmm. i mean i mean bro new reality 50 50 kids mm -hmm. back and forth um you know like it just just everything that comes with that and i think a lot of times we can delay um our healing we can delay the grieving process bro by trying to push off or mask or numb through the pain when the only way bro i was able to heal was like i just i just got to sit with this i got to sit with this man um you know i i had uh i had some brothers in the faith man that were just available to me you know what yeah. i'm saying uh, obviously my family man definitely they were available to me through that moment in time as well. And, and I didn't have money. Let's be clear. So yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't pay for a counselor. I couldn't pay for therapy, but here's what I knew, bro. Mm. Here's what I knew. I, 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 I told myself, I said, the way you got to go through this, Dwayne is like, if you're in the middle of the woods and you get injured and there's no hospital and there's no doctors around, bro, you're going to have to do this naturally. You're going to have to sit and let the body do what the body is meant to do. And I think how, I think how we have, right. Like our bodies will naturally heal themselves. Right. Obviously if you can get the infection cleaned out and whatnot, the body will naturally heal itself. I feel the same way for ourselves emotionally. You know, if we choose not to numb, if we choose not to suppress it, if we choose not to forget it, if we if we also make sure that we fight against lies and accusations, and I'm not talking about lies and accusations from other people. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about lies and accusations, bro, from ourselves. Like yes. the war is in here legitimately, not like people anywhere else, bro. Like the battles that go on in here, way louder, way heavier than the stuff that could come from other people outside of us, bro. And so for me, it was it was holding on to the Lord in that regard. Like I was not angry with the Lord. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Um, I I knew that um I knew that the Lord still loved me. I knew that the Lord still brought me close and near to him. You know what I'm saying? But I also knew that that was a time where Dwayne, you just need to be still and let this thing pass. Man. Be still and let this thing pass, man. And so like. 29 second half of 2019 2020 bro that was covid saving grace for me covid like because it shut off my ability to be connected to people in the ways that i had been for my entire life and so yes. yeah that's 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 how i'll say man that's that's how i say i, I healed bro and, and obviously we can put a nice bow on that bro the grace of jesus Amen. the grace of jesus yeah, right. Because COVID means so many different things to different people. You know what I'm saying? So here it is. Yep. But you're telling this, you know, this is that that saving grace for you. And because I, I and because I remember even for myself, I got I was listening to. Have you read the Four Agreements? The Four Agreements? No, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, okay, but it, it's really good. But anyway, he he's talking about when uh don't take anything personal and he was saying when people mm. say things about you he was like that's uh that's against them not against you he was like and when you take that on he was like you're basically agreeing you know what i'm saying so he was like you're 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 taking that in you're saying yep oh yep. they oh you said i was ugly so since you want to be defensive about it man you're you're taking it yeah you know? yeah yeah, bro. I think that was that was also a huge deal for me in part as part of my healing. That was something that I I vowed with with my kids. You know, I I, I told them I said, hey, you guys are never gonna ever hear me say anything negative about your mom. I'm not telling her story. Her story is not mine to tell. I said, if you really want to know, I'm sure you can ask her, and and she will walk you through that on her end. But 
if I, I will talk to you about, about my side of the coin and where I missed it. You know what I'm saying? No defense, no need to put me in a good line. Like, no, nah, bro, no. I needed my kids to understand that in the context of marriage, bro, it takes two. It takes two to make it thrive and it takes two to make it die, bro, right? And 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 this was my part to my sons and my daughter. This is where your dad missed it. This is this is where your dad needs Jesus. And and so like, bro, 100%. I was like, I'm not giving energy, man, to the stuff that I can't control, to what people say, to what people think. I I can't. I can't, man. It's a, it was enough just dealing with what was in here myself, man. And so I think, man, just in the name of helping folks, man, if we can, I think when you're trying to heal, you got to learn to isolate, right? It is, it's like when somebody is, is in the intensive care unit, right? Like that is a separate wing where visitors are limited, right? Like, Everybody just don't get to go up into the ICU and bring food and throw parties like, no, 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 bro. Like these people are in a state of life or a condition where they need stillness. They need around the clock care from the professionals. They need they need an environment that is secluded, that is incubated, bro, so that they can heal properly, man. And I think a lot of times we invite the party to the ICU when we need not, when we don't need the party to be there at all, man. And so that's just to your point, bro. Yeah. You, you, those messages and all of that stuff, man, you gotta, you gotta be like, no, nope, no, nope, yep. that's, I can't, I can't control that. I can't change your mind on that. Yep. You know? So, yeah. I, I totally agree because even with my daughter at the time, she wanted to know. And I was just telling someone this on an interview the other day that I told my daughter she was 14 at the time. I said, you know, I can't tell you the whole story right now because you wouldn't understand. Mm. And I never had to say anything negative about my ex-wife or anything yep. because yep. we both knew the truth. I didn't have to defend myself. And again, I, no, I admitted no. my issues and my flaws and stuff like that. And everything eventually came to surface. I didn't have to fight like God fought that battle for me. And no. I was like, I realized yeah. from now on, I'm like, I will never try to defend myself again. If, no. if my body of no. work, if I'm secure enough with my body of work and everything that I've done, there's no reason for me to be defensive. And I've learned over time because yep. uh, I struggle with that defensiveness yeah. is, is, is a, a sense yeah. of insecurity. Yep. Yep. You know? Look, man. And let me add one to that. Just, just for on a personal note, bro. Like my, my body of work speaks for itself. Watch this, Sean, on the good side of the things that I've done, but my body of work also speaks for itself, right? On the negative side of the coin. And so here's how I cover that. It's covered in the grace of the grace of God. Watch this, not glossed over it. Let's be clear about it. Yes. Let's be clear about it, because I don't think like I'm all of that in a bag of chips that certain sins would never be named among me. Like, yeah. like if we think, bro, for once that we are above certain sins, like let's just go Romans one for a moment, man. Like let the Lord remove his hand of grace from your life and the very things that you say you would never be caught doing you will find yourself doing, bro. And so I even also think, man, on the other side of the coin, right? Like, especially in divorce with the church, bro, like that there's a stain there, right? That comes from the outside looking in. There's a stain there. But at, at some level, man, it's like, like, yeah, I, it happened. I fell victim to it. I was a part of it. You know what I'm saying? But even in that, man, like that doesn't identify me. It it doesn't name who I am, right? I, I I am still redeemed. I'm still bought back. I'm still brought near and dear to the heart of God in the midst of all of that. And so to your point, I don't need to defend either way. Don't need to defend either way, man. I, I only need to give an answer to those who are in close community with me. And and the relationship is trusted, man. And I think that becomes one of our challenges. We're we're trying to give too many answers, bro, to yeah. too many people who really genuinely don't mean you well. 
they're not going to walk with you after after you have that conversation. You know what I'm saying? They're not doing life with you after that conversation. You know what I mean? So in my opinion, it's like, why are we even having this conversation? Why are you even asking about this, right? It's like, Lord, who have you brought in my camp, in my circle, right? That is that close community that I can walk with and and wrestle and struggle and be and be vulnerable with. You know what I mean? And in that regard, I think there's transparency and vulnerability that could be had in those relationships. Everybody else, hey, pray for me. Yeah. Pray for yeah me. Amen. I heard I heard somebody say it like this, man. If if folk if folk accuse you um of having done, you know, some sin or whatnot, um, or they ridicule you or judge or criticize you, they say my response to them is, Yeah, I've done that and worse. I've done that and worse. And 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 the response was getting at like if we're not putting levels on sin. <laughs> yeah. If we're not putting levels on sin, right? Like, like yeah. divorce is not like the height of heights when it comes to sin. It's not. It's it's divorce is just as damaging, just as detrimental, just as grievous as the person who lies or the person who gossips or the person who is apathetic towards God in the faith, man. And I think when we can embrace that and understand that, our ability to restore people with gentleness becomes easier so man. yeah that's good man yeah the bible says uh be wherever you stand unless you fall so you gotta Come be on, careful man. uh on, man. <laughs> i wanna man i have so many questions to ask uh i okay I'm good. I'm good. Look, I'm on. I'm on you, bro. I'm on you, man. I look. I didn't carve out the night till midnight with you, bro. So it's whatever we do. What What does life look like for Dwayne now? Yeah, man. Um, shoot, bro. Obviously, remarriage. Um, you know, uh, a lot of kids, bro. Um, you know, running the coaching practice, consulting business. And uh, and I can cap this all off by saying, bro, I'm I'm finally five years later, finally feeling like I have the emotional capacity to handle God's purpose and assignment on my life. You know that purpose and assignment never went away. Mm -hmm. I just I just didn't you know as you're healing um, and kind of my process was right there's there's grief and there's healing then there was rehab um, then there was getting stronger right and now I'm in I'm 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 entering into what I call go mode right um, throughout those previous phases I didn't have the emotional capacity and so um, man grateful to the Lord grateful to the lord bro because his redemption is real um his redemption is real man everything that i have in my life now i don't deserve do not deserve to be remarried did not have to be that way um do not deserve and obviously folks can get on ig and and see what see what that life is looking like and just what the favor of the lord is looking like in that regard do not deserve to still have the influence and the relationship bro with my biological kids and then my blended kids and then our kids by hood. Uh, we officially got like nine kids, man. Um, eight of them actually really live with us. Um, and so we kind of got the same. We said we got three by blood, three by blended and three by hood. And then there's a slew of many other kids who literally young folks who are in and out of our house, man, yeah. um, every day of the week, you know, mm -hmm. and um my life just looks like one of Lord, I owe you so much. I, I owe you so much, you know, not from a place of how can I right my wrongs, right? Cause that's already done at the cross, not writing the wrongs, but that that happened five years ago, he brought me through it, right? Redeemed me, strengthened me, called me back to himself and is, and is saying, I still have plans and purpose for you. Right. I still have because, I mean, you know, bro, like when you go through divorce, there's especially if you're a person of influence and whatnot. And you've had folks that looked up to you or you've had, you know, the countless number of marriages that you have impacted and people you you have worked with, bro. Like you question 
you question like, like, man, I even go away from that one for a quick moment. Like I questioned, bro, like was, did I even have what it take, what it took to disciple my kids? Like I wrestled with that, bro. Like, Lord, what do I say to them? You know, I remember having that vivid conversation with the Lord. Wow. I said, what do I say with them? I haven't got a divorce, you know, divorce from their mom and this, that, and the third. And, and the Lord was like, that's where your pride is, Dwayne. You ain't got to be perfect to disciple your kids. Teach them how to trust Jesus through a season of your mess up. Right? We always want to teach folks, bro, when we got it, we got it locked in stuff and it looks good. Yeah. But what about when it doesn't look good? Right? And so I think for me, man, that's that's where my life is right now, bro. It's it's we're able to be a blessing to people, man. Um you know, we've definitely got got recently connected to a new church out here in South Phoenix, man. And, and just the grace of the Lord, bro. Literally the grace of the Lord, man. And so for me, this is like, this is, uh, I'll call it, you know, kind of like second half of my life, if you will. Look, we ain't telling ages, right? Because you didn't say yours earlier, so I ain't going to say mine. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'll be 47 on Sunday, so hey. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. 43 in this camp, man. 43 oh in this God. camp. Yeah. Um, but you're still young. <laughs> look, right? Really? Really? <laughs> uh, but my heart today, man, is like, Lord, how can I just do and be better today than I was yesterday? You know, I don't have to hit this ball out the party. Let me just love well, pace myself, live with a sense of balance, hoping in the Lord alone. Um, throughout this time that the Lord has given me, bro. And this second opportunity that that God has given and allowed. You know what I mean? And yeah. so, um, yeah, bro, that's that's really what life is looking like in a nutshell. Like literally. And people that know us, they got a lot of kids. Yeah. They always bless they always blessing somebody. Yeah. They always got somebody living in the house with them. Like that's Man. that's what that's what we do, bro. That's what yeah. we do. You doing the Lord's work for real, for real. <laughs> hey, I want to. Hey. <laughs> I I want to jump into uh somewhat almost kind of like a bonus round, kind of make it a little light now. You know, we talking yeah. about divorce and remarriage, it's kind of heavy stuff. But let's talk about uh some other things. What what three ingredients every marriage needs to be successful? What are those three ingredients if you was making that cake, Dwayne? What do you need in that cake? Sheesh. <laughs> Three? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. I will. Um, obviously, one will say the Lord initially. Right. But I'm going to I'm going to specify um, kind of a heart posture from the Lord uh, from I'm drawing a blank on the name of the book. Sacred marriage. I want to say it is. I'm just drawing oh, a blank. Sacred marriage. I know. Uh, I know you're talking about. Yeah, but 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 the author talks about um se this self-emptying love. Ugh, right? Like so I think initially a self-emptying love. That's number 1. Number 2, um wiring. Wiring is a big deal. Wiring is a big deal. Let me just I'm a, I'm going to throw a massive curveball, man. Like don't get me wrong. Like the Lord works in and through, right? any couple with different wiring. So let's be clear about that. Yes. Right. But one of the things that my wife and I get the gracious privilege to do with couples who are interested in getting married is we, we, we kind of get to help them see what problems, what type of issues are going to lie ahead for them because of an assessment that we use and what we've learned, what we've learned, bro, is there is no fail proof plan of marrying the person in which you will never have issues. Yeah. The question is, what kind of issues do you want to have? That's the question. And, and within the assessment, bro, like there are, if you marry somebody, um, you know, if you're interested in somebody that has a wiring that is like literally on the opposite end of the spectrum for you, mm -hmm. like your marriage can be successful. It's going to take a lot of work. It's just going to take a lot of work. 
you know, and not just a lot of work, but a lot of work that actually can be debilitating to the core of who you are. Right. So I think wiring matters. I think wiring matters, man. There's That's a lot good. more I could say on that, but wiring matters. Right. So self-emptying love, wiring matters. And then last but not least, bro, like best friendship hands down, hands down, bro. Like y'all got to be able to like hang Harder, bro, than anybody else. Harder, bro, than anybody else, man. Like I would lobby for that. You know, I'm shoot, man. I'm 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 telling. We tell our kids this now, bro. Like, listen, find a friend. Yeah. Find a friend first before you find a date or a mate or a romance partner. Find a friend. Cause here's the catch, bro. If you can't stand being with them around the clock what makes you think you're gonna want to do a lifetime with them mm -hmm. like you know what i'm saying so it's just like you know and i think a lot of times man and again i, I hope people understand my heart man this in no yeah. way is speaking on the previous but sure i think i think man what 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 is to be understood in the pre-marriage phase bro um and i thought that was a profound question that you asked me like what made me want to get married? You know what I'm saying? And I saw what my parents had in terms of their marriage, but one ingredient, bro, that I I, I, I just wasn't, I, I, I want to say I was privy to, but it just wasn't on my radar growing up, um, was their friendship, bro. To their, their friendship, to this day, Sean, my parents have little tit for tats, right? Like they like they friends, like they <laughs> yeah. friends, right? Like it'll be da 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 da, right? You see them go back and forth, literally, bro. Five minutes later, they cackalacking, like yep. they just didn't have a little, you know. And so it's like, man, that friendship, bro, that friendship, you know. I think I, I've learned that if you have the friendship, when the marriage finds itself in a tough place, okay. The friendship can sustain you while you get your act together in the marriage. Is you know so, what I'm saying? It's so funny you say that because I was telling somebody that the other day. And and even like you said, no, no shade to the former. And I think that was something all. that we struggle with in our first marriage. Cause now that I look back, we weren't mm -hmm. best friends. Yeah. We weren't. Yeah. But my yeah. wife now we are best friends because when she get on my nerves as a wife or when I get on her, we can always fall on that friendship. Like yep. that's my yep. dog. Like I can't, that's my, you know what I'm saying? Like we ride. I get it. We, we ride it, man. And it's, and it's, and it's mutual. It's mm -hmm. mutual, man. I think one of the, um, a good expression of that friendship in my marriage now, bro, is when, when we're having, you know, we call them contentious conversations. That's what we call them. Um, so when we're having the contentious conversations, uh, a contentious conversation, like there has been times where we we're in a, we're in a conversation and neither of us really have anything to say. Right. But the conversation hasn't been concluded. It hasn't been reconciled yet. And so we'll just sit there in the same room, bro, together, holding hands, heated and stuck as all get out. Right. Cause I'm not walking away from my best friend. Like you think about that, bro. I, I think it's, it's very interesting. And this is why, this is why I think best. I think the friendship is, it matters, bro. Like you don't, you rarely ever hear people talking about, man, you did this, that to me. I'm not being your friend anymore. Right. Like that's like, that's like elementary stuff. Right. Like, you know, when you got a friend, 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 bro, like when you're an adult, like that's just not common, bro. You don't hear about that all the time. Like I'm not being your friend anymore. You shouldn't like, come on. But it seems like when we get into marriage, right, and things don't go the way we think they should go, we all of a sudden want to throw away the marriage. When in all actuality, the marital union, biblically speaking, right, like it's 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 stronger. It's a, it's a it's a it's a greater covenant. You know what I'm saying? In the eyes of the Lord. And so for me, it's like since the marriage is a greater covenant in the eyes of the Lord, Lord. Let me, in my pre-marriage state, let me find a friend. Yes. Let me find a best friend, Lord God, so that we got two things working on our side. 
You know what I mean? When one is straining, when the marriage is straining, friendship holds us together, right? What does the scripture say? There is a friend that sticks closer <laughs> than, a than a brother, right? Mm -hmm. But then it's sometimes maybe the friendship is struggling, right? And maybe that's a season where the covenant holds you together. You know what I mean? So that's just... Just, yeah, those are the three ingredients, man. I know I probably went a little long in that one, but I yeah. love that. No, that's good, man. I have one last question before we get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Who makes a better spouse? Someone marrying for the first time or someone who's remarried? Sheesh. Bro, that's loaded. <laughs> <laughs> ah, let me tell you why it's loaded. It's loaded because. Because most times, like in when you're coming into your first marriage, right, you you don't have the baggage of the previous marriage. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you you got childhood baggage. You know what I mean? Like, and depending on when you get married, you got you know you got you got temporary relational baggage, right? Yeah. Especially if this is your first one, right? I mean, those are bags. Let's don't get me wrong. And and then depending on the childhood context, like if there's abuse or there's gross toxicity growing up as a kid, right? Then that, those bags are heavy. But let's just say you lived a relatively, you know, normal childhood, nothing gross, nothing super toxic, you know, re relatively peaceful childhood growing up. Your bags are light, and so like it's kind of like everything is new. You know what I mean? Um, but then one could say that when you're coming into your second marriage, if you're not prideful and if you're humble, right, you, you, you have, you have, you have wisdom and experience, you know, um, perspective that you can bring into your second marriage that can help you navigate through that. You know what I mean? And so, to answer the question flat out, who makes the better spouse? Yeah. It's the one who is mature enough to embrace the season for what it is, own what they need to own, and make room for the other person to be who they were made to be in their lives. That's what I would say. That's good. Yeah, there's no right or wrong answer. I, I just love to hear people's perspective. I ask that every I ask that to all my guests. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Great perspective. Yeah. Great perspective. Man, this has been a phenomenal episode. I'm glad that we were able to connect again and to be able for you to share your testimony. Uh I want to acknowledge you first of all for that, for mm. sharing your testimony. Um, acknowledging you for loving again, right? Yeah. A lot of times yeah. people give up. Um, bro, yeah, I, I I was one of those ones. I was like, bro, I'm I'm good. I'm never getting married again. I said that. Yeah, I said that. I, so, yeah, yeah, I, I get it. And there's a lot of people that they do not cross that path. They're done. So I want to acknowledge yeah. you for loving again. Yeah. Again, our tagline is love fearlessly. We want you to love mm. fearlessly. If you're gonna do it, you might as well do it wholeheartedly. Bruh, um, so, and uh, I want to acknowledge you for uh, just staying the course with parenting, which just being present in your mm. kids' life, uh, and just yeah. acknowledging you for all the lives that you've impacted. I know you on a personal level, and all the people that you have touched. So uh, I want to acknowledge you for those things. So uh, let Thank everyone, you, man. anytime, man, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. I have everything linked up in the description. Yeah, a um, couple places, obviously on on Instagram. Uh, I think it's like DW underscore TDH Tribe or something like that. You know, my wife kind of really pushes all of that out. But you can find Dwayne and Wendy um, and search Dwayne and Wendy, and you'll find us. Um, or go to tdhcoaching.com if you're looking for counseling, looking for coaching. Um, you know, there's also some business and organizational consultancy stuff that we do on there. So tdhcoaching.com um, or just shoot an email team at dhawkins.com. And uh, man, we'd love to connect and just be able to be a blessing to to so many other people because that's who we believe the Lord has made us to be, man. Amen to that. Well, Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you connect with Dwayne. The man is solid. He's been solid as long as I've been knowing him. And I know he's been solid before mm -hmm. that. So. Uh, make sure that you connect with him in the description below. Make sure you click those links. I will have everything linked up there. If you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. You never know who's going through things. So please share this video with a friend who might need it. You never know who Dwayne's testimony can touch. 
If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. By doing so, it puts you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. We gave away a free Amazon gift card not too long ago. Who doesn't like free things? Would love to hear from you. This is Sean Heineman with special guest Dwayne Hawkins. We are out. Thank you. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.